And we'll go back to the L.A. Coliseum. Spectacular day. And this is Fox College Football. Brought to you by Reese's, where this afternoon, the fourth-ranked team in the land, the Oregon Ducks, prepare to take on Lane Kiffin's USC Trojans. Gus Johnson along with Charles Davis. Time now to join the third member of our team who moments ago caught up with SC head coach Lane Kiffin. Here's Julie Alexandria. Thanks so much, guys. Coach, all of the focus this week has been on last week's loss. How do you get these guys focused and ready to go up against Oregon? Well, they're ready to go. This is a great opponent coming in here, obviously. Very good in all three phases of the game. It's going to be an awesome day in front of a great crowd. Now, what did you stress to these guys before they took the field? Was there a message that you really want them to remember in this game? Yeah, play with great composure. Don't let the energy get to you. Make really good decisions. Come back to the sideline and do it again and again and again. It's a heavyweight championship fight today. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. All right, thank you very much. As we take a look at the series note, this is the ninth straight meeting in which both teams are ranked. USC leads the series. However, Oregon has won seven of the last 12. So USC won the toss, deferred. Oregon will receive perfect day for football here in Southern California. 75 degrees and sunny. So back deep to Black Mamba, number six, DeAnthony Thomas, along with Keenan Lowe. DeAnthony Thomas played his high school football right around the corner at Crenshaw High here in L.A. Andre Hadari ready to send it away for SC. And Charles, if this game comes close to what took place at Eugene last year, we're in for a good one. That we are. That game was a classic right out of the gate. This place has the same type of energy they had in Eugene last year. USC preseason, ranked number one. They've fallen well below expectations, but here's their shot to win a big game on their home field. And we're underway from L.A. And this went into the end zone for a touchback. Oregon will start from the 25. And that brings us to this afternoon's impact players. You just mentioned DeAnthony Thomas. He'll play from the running back and slot position. Deion Jordan was beat up a little bit last week against Colorado. We'll see if he can go. A terrific pass rusher, Avery Patterson, has played well at safety. And Ifo, Ekpre, Olamu has been a tremendous corner. For New York, for USC, Marquise Lee should be a Heisman Trophy candidate. Deion Bailey, Hayes Pollard, and TJ McDonald have to contain the heavy run game of Oregon. Otherwise, USC is in for big trouble. First down to 10 of the 25. Mario to throw on first down. And he has his receiver, Josh Huff. The junior, Marcus Mariota, first freshman to start at quarterback for Oregon since Danny O'Neill in 1991. And here are the quick strike ducks. Back to the line of scrimmage after a nine-yard game. Second down and one. They hand it off. Barner straight ahead. He crosses the 40 up to the 41-yard line. Tackled by Deion Bailey. Also, Anthony Brown in on the play. Notice early Oregon in the backfield. You've got DeAnthony Thomas on the field and Mariota, who's been so tremendous as a quarterback, gives you a third running threat with Barner and Thomas. Mariota also uses his legs quite well. Now he pulls it down, rolls out of the pocket, throws on the run. He has up. He juggled it. And they're going to call this a catch at the 30-yard line. And if you're USC, you want it reviewed right away because of the juggling, but I think they got it right. Huff, as he was juggling it and bringing it in, kept the foot in bounds. Well done by Huff on the sideline. That's a 30-yard game. Mariota now finding his tight end, Colt Lyerla. Hayes Ballard with the tackle. And look how fast Oregon wants to go now. Everyone getting to their positions quickly. In the red zone, they have been lethal all season long. 39 touchdowns in 49 possessions. Gain of eight, opening drive for Oregon. Mariota firing, lofting it! Touchdown, the Black Mamba! And just like that, Oregon opens up and scores on their opening drive. The Anthony Thomas. 
and Oregon called the game in reverse early. They are a heavy run team with their spread. They came out throwing the football, moving at a fast pace, never let USC get set and confident on defense. And be aware, they don't mind going for two out of this formation. So Rob Beard comes on to attempt the extra point. The Ducks, as you always say, Charles, play with NASCAR-type speed. They go on a five-play. 75-yard drive. It took them a minute and five to score. And just like that, Oregon with a seven-point lead. DeAnthony Thomas on his return to Southern California. Coming up big early. Oh, the distance inspires what we roll into yours. Good year, more driven. Oregon revving it up early. Five plays, 75 yards, scoring in a minute and five on their opening drive. Chip Kelly, not only does he want to blow out USC, he may have to. The way things are shaping up with the computers, they need to have convincing wins down the stretch, even though they're going to play quality opponents. Marquise Lee on the sideline. Lee trying to get outside. He crosses the 20, flag on the play. Jay Strickerts, your referee in charge today. During the return, Holy on the return team, number 55. Ten yard penalty, first down. So that will back the Trojans up even more. So Matt Barkley came into this season as the front runner for the Heisman Trophy. Last year against Oregon, he was 26 to 34, 323, four touchdowns and a pick and has to play with a longer field. What did Lane Kiffin tell our Julie Alexandrian pregame? He wants a clean game. Go out and play without these penalties. Play without the mistakes. Not happening. The Trojans last year were pretty good against the penalties. So the clock's out right now. The official will kept, keep the time on the field, but USC last in the nation in penalties this season. Uncharacteristic of them. First down and 10 at their own 12 for Matt Barkley. Out of the shotgun. High snap, handle. Barkley sprints out, throws on the run, and caught. Robert Woods, who's been plagued by a tender ankle dating back to last year. It's hampered him a bit this year, according to Lane Kiffin yesterday. What I want to see is with these great receivers of USC, I fully expect the corners and the nickelbacks who have to come up and press them to do exactly that. I don't expect there to be a lot of room for USC to maneuver with their receivers. I think they're going to bring pass rush, and put pressure on the receivers and force them to make extra moves downfield to try and beat them. Five yard gain, second and five. Silas Red out of the offset eye. They give it to him. Red with running room. And Silas Red up the sideline. And Silas Red crosses the 35. And if you're going to slow down the Oregon offense, you keep them on the sideline. That's a way to do it. Last year, USC had about 37 minutes time of possession in the game. Oregon still ran 10 more plays than USC. But every time you have the football, as you noted, if you're USC, that means Oregon's offense does not, and not a chance for them to get on the field and score. First down and 10 after the 18-yard game. Red stumbles, and Silas Red going down. Kiko Alonzo, first man to him, the middle linebacker. Lonzo didn't play last week against Colorado, had a bad wrist. But if you want a, a middle linebacker to take on people in the running game, outside of Manti Teo at Notre Dame, Kiko Alonzo would be a guy that you would line up and say, go get him. Love to play downhill, a striking hitter inside the box. Team's second leading tackler, second and 10 at the 35. Here's Barkley on the play action fake. Finds his tight end, Xavier Grimble with running room, and Grimble gets to the 45. Olamu coming up from his right corner position to make the tackle after the nine-yard game. And we hit third down. 
Richard, with USC, you would expect with the weapons they have. We just saw one of them, Grimble the tight end. We're talking about Woods, Marquise Lee, 32% on third down, and they're gonna go wildcat with Barkley split out wide. Silas Red will handle the football. And he runs it straight ahead. Looking for the first down in the lead. Looks like he has it. Silas Red transferring from Penn State after the Jerry Sandusky child sex abuse scandal rocked that university and program. Wanted a fresh start. Has gotten one here at SC, and they need him now. Great acquisition by Lane Kiffin because he's very thin in the backfield. Curtis McNeil missed last week's game. He's been cleared to go today. But DJ Morgan, who played extensively against Arizona, ruled out for this game. So they're down to two healthy backs at the running back position. First down and 10 of the 46. Opening drive for SC. Silas Red trying to pick a spot. Breaks a tackle. Red lowers his shoulder and gets close to the first down. Smash mouth football early on for SC. Olamu and Brian Jackson combining on the tackle. And these are the types of plays they'll have to make all game long. Look at the support he gets here. But really, Silas Red made the play. Look at that. In the hole, he's going to make two miss right there. And Alonso's a good tackler. He misses. Himuli missed also. Michael Clay misses. Another good tackler at linebacker. To win this game, the top playmakers for USC have to make their normal plays and then a few extra. Picks up 10 yards. Curtis McNeil checks in now. Out of the eye. First down and 10. On first down, he throws it. Looking for Aguilar! The freshman! Touchdown! SC! Whoa, they're going to wipe it off. Take a look at the end of the play. Does he possess it all the way through? And he does not. Remember, you have to possess the ball all the way through the completion of the play and the catch. Watch at the end of the play. Ball pops out. And the back judge, Brad Robinson, with a good view from inside, came over to help out his fellow official and wave off the touchdown. Nelson Aguilar unable to control it all the way through. Lane Kiffin gritting his teeth, second and ten. A big shot, a big opportunity they weren't able to capitalize on. Probably going to take a look upstairs at the play. The USC head coach is challenging the ruling on the previous play. The ruling on the field is incomplete pass. See, the key to this play is not the catch initially. Watch Olamu, 14, popping the ball. Now, does he possess the ball through the completion of the play? As he hits the ground, that ball comes out. Mike, what are your thoughts? Hey, just like, uh, just like Charles says, this is the same as the NFL, the process of going to the ground. And since he's contacted on the way to the ground, he's got to hold on to the ball. When he hits the ground, ball pops out. Simple in completion. Good job of the back judge coming over and overruling the initial call of a uh, touchdown. After so to me, with that ball coming out as soon as he hits. lost control of the ball when he hits the ground. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Pass is incomplete. USC ball second down. Thank you, Mike, very much. They, they got it right because they did a good job of team officiating. Brad Robinson, the back judge, had the view from inside. Not hesitant to come over and get the call right. You're not worried about the feelings of your fellow official. You've got to have the call correct. He had the view, saw it, made the call, and it turned out to be upheld. Second down and 10 at the 44, opening drive for USC. Marquise Lee in motion. Play fit. They dump it off. Gribble. And Gribble over the 40-yard line up to close to the 43. Tony Washington ushering, out of, ushering him out of bounds, and that brings up another big third down. And USC was able to run for it on third and very short last time on this set. 
I'm not sure they run the football. I think somehow they want to throw it. We just saw Barkley, Barkley boot out, get to the edge, and get a quick pass to the sideline. Let's see the pass rush if it gets a chance to get ramped up against some tough tackles for USC. Kevin Graff has trouble with speed rushers, and Max Turk is a true freshman at left tackle. Third down and three. Barkley out of the shotgun. <laughs> Here's Barkley. Let's it go quickly. Caught. First down, Marquise Lee. And he one-handed that one. Ball thrown behind him. And Marquise Lee, the athlete, makes a play. And they hit him in the backfield. This is Marquise Lee, normally a wide receiver, just swinging him out. Didn't put him in his normal spot. That probably messed up the reads and the keys for Oregon. And then what a terrific one-handed catch, reaching back. And look at his eyes. Catches the ball, focused, looking up, knows where the first down is, and sees the contact coming. Tenth play of the drive, first down and ten now for the Trojans at the Oregon 28. Here's a handoff, side is red. And he goes down. Now let's go to Studio A, where our Aaron Andrews is standing by for an update. And Jeff's going to update you on this Notre Dame pit game right here. Notre Dame down 20 to 12. Then Everett Golson finds Theo Riddick in the end zone, and that would make it 20 to 18. The Fighting Irish go for two here. Golson runs it in for the two-point conversion. We are tied now in overtime. All right, thank you very much, Aaron. Irish. They always have that something lucky about it, something to find a way. But as we all know, those undefeateds will get challenged down the stretch, and it usually comes from a source you least expect. Second down and eight of the 26. Here's Barkley in trouble and gets it away. Matt Barkley clobbered as he released the football. And that was Deion Jordan, number 96, who came to the game questionable with a bad shoulder, hurt it against Colorado. He hurt his ankle last year and only played part of the first quarter at Oregon, and his lack of pass rushing skills hurt Oregon's defense against USC. Today, he's going to work mainly from his right, USC's left, against Max Turk, a true freshman left tackle. Deion Jordan likes that matchup. Third down and eight at the 26. Marquise Lee, the receiver at the top of your screen. Robert Woods at the bottom. He's great on crossing routes. And they throw to the sideline. Ball by Jalen Cope Fitzpatrick. But he doesn't have enough for the first down. So a decision has to be made now for Lane Kiffin, and he's bringing on the field goal unit. Earlier in the year, this would have been a decision for him. But he feels a lot more confident now that he has Andre Hadari back from knee surgery to go ahead and try and put points on the board as opposed to having to go for it on fourth down. His long of the season, 41 yards. He's 6 of 9. Didn't attempt one last week at Arizona. This one from 39 yards away. Up. And perfect. So SC settles for three. Matt Barkley unable to get him in the end zone. Seven to three, our score here in Los Angeles. And here comes the Black Mamba back on the field for Oregon. Yeah. Oregon scoring on their opening drive. SC. With the field goal, Matt Barkley, no problems marching his team down the field. They stalled a little bit when they got close to the red zone. Records just keep falling when Matt Barkley throws the football, but I think he'd like to have the last couple of throws he made back. One inaccurate, incomplete, and the second one he actually knocked down his tight end because of where the ball placement was instead of keeping him on his feet to allow him to go for the first down. Adari will send it away. The Anthony Thomas and low back deep. This one sailing in the end zone again. So they're not going to give the Anthony Thomas an opportunity to run one back. Superstorm Sandy left a path of destruction across the country and the American Red Cross is providing life saving services such as meals shelter and mobilizing resources and workers nationwide. Visit redcross.org or text Red Cross to 90999 to give a $10 donation. Yeah, all, all of our thoughts, prayers, is going out to everyone in the Northeast and all areas affected. We know a number of people personally. First down at 10 of the 25. Kenyon Barner in the backfield. 
And he'll run it in the left. Now, Oregon. When you said something interesting on their first drive, you said they, they scored in reverse. What did you mean? Meaning Oregon is a heavy run team first. They may be a spread team, but all spread teams aren't built to throw the football first. Oregon is spreading it to run it. But on the first drive, they went at their normal hyperspeed, or blur speed as they call it, but they threw the ball far more than they ran it. I think it caught USC a little bit off guard on the first drive. Mariota over the middle and caught. And this time it's Hawkins with the reception. Darrell Hawkins, the junior. As you take a look at the run pass decisions by Oregon. Remember, they averaged 330 yards rushing per game, third in the nation. Just a little bit over 200 yards passing. First down and 10. Mariota runs it, and he's tripped up at midfield. Torn Harris trips him up after a four-yard gain. See, Oregon with the three in the backfield. When you have Barner, Kenyon Barner, D'Anthony Thomas, and Marcus Mariota at quarterback, you get a Bermuda Triangle of runners. Where is the problem going to be for USC? All of them can affect you. Second down and six. Running the football again is Kenyon Barner, and he picks up the first down. Stopped by Greg Townsend. Kenyon Barner this season, closing in on 1,000 yards, leading the conference. Didn't take him long to find an answer. For the Michael James had it had it in their backfield all along. Barner now getting the bulk of the carries. They run it. Barner trying to get outside and does. And Barner finally knocked out of bounds by Nikhil Roby after a gain of about four. This seems like a small thing, but it's a big thing for USC. Lamar Dawson, number 55, middle linebacker, had a chance to tackle Barner initially. Okay, so he doesn't break a big play but he puts it in second and manageable instead of making it second and seven or more. On second and five, Mariota in trouble, scrambles. He's got space, and he's got wheels. Gets out of bounds, picks up the first. That's what makes this kid so dangerous as a redshirt freshman. And he gets help from his wide receivers. These are not your wide receivers who are the divas that only catch footballs. These are wide receivers that will block and fight all the time to extend the running game. Josh Huff gave an escort to Mariota on the sideline to pick up the first down. First down, they'll pitch it. Barner with a blocker in front of him. Barner gets down the sideline and finally goes out after another first down close to the 15. Gerald Bowman pushing him out of bounds. And while it may look exotic because Oregon's going so fast, these plays are standard plays that can be found in anyone's playbook. Tosses, counters, traps. But they go so fast, it's hard to be ready to defend them. Mariota to throw it. Mariota sacked in the backfield. Backside pressure being applied by USC, and it's Wes Horton, the senior. And to get that, that meant they had to get coverage in the secondary. Look at USC now, locking up. Murphy, number 89, trying to break free. Nothing there for Mariota, which allows Horton to come from the backside and try and cause a fumble. See him trying to go for the strip? No sacks last week against Arizona for the Trojans. Second and 15. And they dump it off. Huff. Josh Huff, touchdown Oregon. Three to play in the first quarter, and the Ducks with a chance to take a 14 to 3 lead. Rob Beer, extra point good. Marcus Mariota, the orchestrator, spreading it around. This time it's Huff for six.
and move ahead in our broadcast. And what he's hoping now, Marquise Lee's hoping, is that his defense can bail him out a little bit. Finish plays as a wide receiver. Don't leave your quarterback and your team hung out by not finishing the route before complaining to the officials. Can the defense pick him up now and save him? Third down and nine. Mariota steps into his throw and has a first down. Josh Huff. And on any other team, Josh Huff would be the number one receiver. If he could stay healthy, he probably would be for Oregon. His last couple of seasons, he's been dinged. Stress fractures last season. A sprained knee this season. Came into today's game with nine catches on the year. I believe that's his third now for the game. One of them going for a touchdown. Four catches, 49 yards last week. Yes, in their blowout win against Colorado. On first down, Kenyon Barner straight ahead. Picks up four. Morgan Breslin, the junior college transfer with the tackle. And what Josh Huff also gives you is that run after catch ability. A high school running back and quarterback. Stoutly built. Can be a game breaker. Second and six. Mariota pitches. Fumble. Out of bounds. The Anthony Thomas slipped out of his hands. And the only reason that happened is the quarterback running back ratio and pitch. Gats got cut down. Normally it's a little more distance. As he was running to the corner, that got closer. And when he pitched it to him, it came at him harder than he's used to it, used to seeing it. But he picks up a first down anyway, a 14-yard gain. And look how Oregon keeps their receivers away from jam coverage. You can't jam with two guys here in this type of a tandem setup. Watch the pitch at the corner. Running on the field, there was a backward pass caught and a runner ran out of bounds. Game clock will start on the ready for play. And they are correct. It was not a forward lateral. That pitch happened as a true lateral going back behind the quarterback to the trail back. First down inside, SC territory. Barner looking. And Morgan Breslin stops him, but he gains four. Not your typical four yards in a cloud of dust. No. <laughs> it's four yards in a blur of feet normally <laughs> for Oregon. Even on a four-yard game, you're holding your breath, wondering if they're going to slip out of that pile. Second down and five as we come to the end of the first quarter. The pitch, Barner. First down. <laughs> Zone running team. We talked about how Chip Kelly likes speed at every position. A lighter offensive line that's mobile. But you see them all stepping to the left, almost on a track together to get out to the corner and give that to their running back. They condition by the way they practice full speed every day. First down and 10 at the 32. Now Mariota running up the sideline and out of bounds. And that will be the end of the first quarter with the score, Oregon 14, SC3, the Ducks moving and grooving again. Back after this. Our score right here, 14-3, Oregon with 203 yards of total offense in the first quarter. 86 yards rushing. Second and five of the 27. Mariota underneath. Oh, almost picked off. Lamar Dawson, if he could have held on, he had a touchdown in front of him. And what's difficult for USC is this is a nice play by Dawson, 55. Watch him move to the football. And what's nice is the play, but what's not nice is he didn't finish it off. Last time USC got a sack on Mariota, the very next play, then threw a touchdown pass. Third down and five to the 27.
They hand it off. Barner with a first down and more. Pops it outside to the corner. Kenyon Barner touchdown. Oregon. 27 yards. Every opportunity must be taken advantage of because if you don't get the interception and you give them extra plays, this is what Oregon does. Look at the blocking. He's not pressed at all until he gets inside the five-yard line and he runs through the tackle by Jawanza Starling and puts it in the end zone for the third time today for Oregon. And the extra point by Beard is good. 21 to 3. Kenyon Barner. Elusive. Physical. Oregon. Rolling. Kenyon Barner has rushed for 100 yards in four consecutive games. He has 90 yards on 10 carries, and we just started the second quarter as he capped off the 10 play drive with the 27 yard run to get into the end zone. Last year in Eugene, USC built up a 24 point lead into the third quarter. They were the ones out in front. Tonight, they'll be the ones doing the chasing. Marquise Lee lets it go over his head and into the end zone for a touchback. So Matt Barkley will start from his own 25. Now tomorrow, Fox NFL Sunday features a full slate of action featuring the Cardinals taking on the Packers in Green Bay, the Panthers versus the Skins, or the Vikings taking on the Seahawks as both teams look to bounce back from a tough loss. Coverage begins tomorrow with the Fox NFL Sunday pregame show, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Game that intrigues me is the Bears at Titans. I think that's going to be a tight, hard fought affair in Tennessee. From the 25, Matt Barkley, 8 of 12, 82 yards. He'll throw it all the way down. Marquise Lee! Caught! Marquise Lee! Touchdown, SC! 75 yards! Take a look at the defense out on the corner against Marquise Lee. And Crayola fell down on the jam, and Dargan overran the play coming over as Lee got inside of it. USC's offensive line gave Barkley plenty of time to let that route develop, and he hits Lee in stride for a huge play for USC. Extra point by Hadari is good. SC striking big. And quickly, Matt Barkley with the golden arm, finding maybe the most talented receiver in college football, Mark Eastley, 21-10. In a car this size. 21-10, our score. SC with a big play for Marquise Lee, 75 yards. He now has his 10th career 100-yard game. Three catches, 100 and a touchdown. And you get the feeling, folks, we're just getting started here in L.A. Hadari will send it away. Back-to-back -back touchbacks for Andre Hadari. This time, the Black Mamba brings it out. And the Anthony Thomas goes down at the... Make it the 22 yard line and a flag on the play. After the play, personal foul on the return team, number 46. Penalties enforced half the distance to the goal, first down. 
That's Michael Clay. Now let's go back to Studio A and Aaron Andrews. Gus, Notre Dame rallies from being down 14 points, goes into three overtimes and wins it. That's Everett Golson with the one-yard touchdown run to seal it. Notre Dame is 9-0 for the first time since 1993, guys. All right, Aaron, first down to 10 at the 12. Mariota handing it off, and Barner drops immediately. Morgan Breslin make that the Anthony Thomas. And what a season for Breslin this year. And he's been a terrific pass rusher. But how about how he played the run, played off the block of Jake Fisher, number 75, held the point of attack, and dropped Thomas in his tracks. That's a loss of five. Second down at 15. Anthony Thomas in space now. And Thomas gets to the 15-yard line. Lauren Harris escorting him out of bounds with a question for the Trojans. Can they get off the field on third down? They haven't yet. And percentage-wise for the year, they've gotten off the field on third down 30. They've only helped teams to 35%, making it on third down. They need that to show up here. Third down at six. Mariota lobbing it. Carter, first down, Oregon. And not only has Oregon scored, Charles, on every drive, but they've gone almost the length of the field to score. The breakneck speed. They're not daunted by much, are they? That goes back to Chip Kelly and his next play philosophy. Something goes wrong, you get sacked, you throw a touchdown pass the next play. Five yeah. plays, 75 yards. Nine plays, 75 yards. Ten play, 80 yards for touchdowns. Barner breaking tackles again. Kenyon Barner in SC territory out of bounds at the 30. Jawan's a stalling there, but it's a gain of 41. I played for a coach who used to say a lost opportunity is never regained. Okay, Wes Horton, number 96 for USC. Here's an opportunity right there. Now what does it turn into? Missed the opportunity, missed the tackle. 30 plus yards later. On first down, the Anthony Thomas this time. Thomas running downhill. And Thomas tackled inside the 20. You see that next play philosophy continue to show up for Oregon. Something goes a little haywire, let it go. Next play, make a big play. And they continue to move the ball down the field with precision. First down at the SC18. Here's the pitch. And knifing in Dion Bailey. As he stops the Anthony Thomas before he can get started. And for USC, their hybrid players have to make those plays. Dion Bailey, Hayes Pollard, guys who look like strong safeties but play as linebackers. TJ McDonald, the strong safety, who can come up and play like a linebacker. Those are the players who have to make plays for USC. A loss of six, second and 16. Play fake, Mariota winds up. Mariota underneath, and he has his receiver, Thomas, at the 10-yard line. About three and a half yards short of a first down. You see the versatility of DeAnthony Thomas, running back, slot receiver, he can do it all. Mariota. Near side, caught by Will Murphy, and Murphy picks up a first down. T.J. McDonald, Hayes, Pilar combining on the tackle. Then this reminds you a little bit of Princeton offense and basketball to us, with everyone available to touch the ball and make a play. Will Murphy? Will Murphy had nine catches on the season prior to that one. Mariota dancing in the pocket, gets it away, and incomplete. I don't know if it reminds me of the Princeton offense as much as it reminds me of a video game. <laughs> I'm this good on Madden. <laughs> I like your analogy better. I was just talking about Princeton and the number of people who touch it, you know, in each and every play, and the offense can come from anywhere. But your video game analogy, spot on. <laughs> Third down and goal at the five. Make a second down and goal at the five. Barner looking to get to the corner. And go. Man. Are they this good? They are. And they're letting the nation know as this goes on 
Now, long way to go. USC, we've seen with their quick strike capability. We saw it on the last possession. They can come back and score in one or two plays. So they're long from being out of the woods, but they are that good. And it's very interesting to see Notre Dame holding on to beat an unranked fit team. A flag on the play. Kenyon Barner. Running hard. And let's see what the flag is. Offense, five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Try will be tempted from the eight yard line. And Oregon has been, what do they call it, leapfrogging? Twice already. Yeah, twice people have jumped ahead of them because of the computers. The humans have been strong for Oregon, voting them consistently number two in the country. But the computers haven't liked their schedule. Well, their schedule should start to catch up for them, starting with this game with USC. If they win this one, they should expect to see some bounce from it. And the extra point blocked. So with 11.27 to go in the first half, Oregon with a 27 to 10 lead. Barner hopping in the end zone again. Have you got a drawer full of? All right, Oregon successful on every drive. Kenyon Barner with two touchdowns. Who's that guy standing next to him? He That's looks familiar. Yeah, he wore number 21 for Oregon last year and kept Kenyon Barner from gaining more yards. That's little Michael James. Open week for the San Francisco 49ers. He's been inactive every game so far for the 49ers. They're so loaded at running back. You must be loaded if you can't find a spot for the Michael James to play for you. Marquise Lee starts from the two yard line. And Lee making people miss. Marquise Lee going down at around the 22. And that brings us to our AFLAC trivia question. Who are the only two coaches in Pac-12 history to win the conference title in their first season? We'll give you a hint. One of them coached for USC. First down and 10 at the 23. The new in red in the eye. Barkley wants to throw it, steps up. Underneath it, complete intended for Robert Woods. That ball thrown behind him. Barkley under pressure. And that duress was created by number 66, Taylor Hart, who got into the backfield, and Barkley wasn't able to set and fire as normal. That caused the incompletion and the lack of accuracy that you noted. SC has had some injuries on their offensive line. Audrey Walker, their talented sophomore left tackle. Out with a concussion. Max Turk playing left tackle today. Clark Lee to Marquise Lee. Hesitation gets up the sideline and is knocked out of bounds at the 30. Kiko Alonzo there. As well as Avery Patterson. USC wanted to take a shot on that play. They were using Lee, wanted Lee to be a decoy, hoping for him to draw the attention and draw the eyes of the defenders to him and have them leap up and have Barkley throw one deep to Aguilar. But Oregon didn't tumble for that, and he had to try. He faked it, looked deep, and had to come back to Lee and give it to him. Third down and two at the 31. Barkley drops it off to Griffith, first down. Michael Clay defensively for Oregon. But Matt Barkley keeps the chains moving. What Oregon has done over the years, they've always been fast on defense. Now they've got some bulk inside. And I think we're seeing that in the play calling the Blaine Kiffin on third and short now. Not running for it very often. Faking the run, getting it out into the flat to the running backs and receivers to try and pick up first downs. From the 36, Red. And Red keeps his feet 
stumbles forward close to the first down. Avery Patterson grabbed his ankle. And if he doesn't hook that, hook uh, Silas Fred's ankle, he might have run for big yardage on that play. Patterson coming up from the safety position got just enough of him to throw it off. Otherwise, he's got Collin Holmes' his center out in front as a lead and possibly still stepping towards the end zone. Both teams racking up major yardage per play. Second and one at the 45. Red again, first down. And he'll get to the 40. A 15-yard gain for Silas Red. And one thing about being a play caller is you've got to put your ego aside. What did Lane Kiffin do on the last two plays? He's seen something that's working for him. It's a nice gain from Red. Comes right back with a similar play call to the same side of the line of scrimmage and another first down run. From the Oregon 40, Manuku and McNeil line up in the offset eye. They give it to McNeil with space. Curtis McNeil still turning. And McNeil down at the 20. Has three straight big runs for the offensive line of USC. Watch these big fellas working, especially to this side of the line of scrimmage. That's Abe Markowitz, 50. 75 is Max Turk. You got Soma Panuku, 31, the fullback getting out. Robert Woods, the wide receiver. Doing a nice job. Don't forget Randall Telfer, number 82 at tight end. Sealed the end and allowed him to get to the corner. A 20-yard gain, first down and 10 at the 20. And this time, Curtis McNeil bottled up in the backfield, Kiko Alonzo. So they got three good runs, three strong runs to the left side. They come back for a fourth, and Alonzo's there. What does that mean if you're a play caller? Think counter here. What I mean by that is show something left, come back and hit them somewhere else. Now that you have them thinking that's where you want to go. Loss of three, second and 13. Red running left. And Alonzo there again. So that'll bring up a third down and long for USC. Are they in four down territory right now? I think it depends on how short it'll be on fourth down. You know, the, the problem you have is there's plenty of time left in the game, so points are at a premium for you. But the way, but Oregon, the way scoring. Oregon scores, you think to yourself, I don't know if I can miss an opportunity. But I don't think he'll be foolhardy and say, I've got to go for it on fourth and ten. He's going to need something significant to think about doing that. Third down and 11 at the 21. Robert Woods in the slot. Barkley over the middle. Caught. Lee. Picks up the first down at the nine. A 12 yard gain on third and 11. And Gus, the decisions you don't have to make as a play caller are your favorite ones. You don't have to worry about fourth down now. And you remember what I said earlier about Marquise Lee, that you have to play through some things. You have to play through some contact. On the touchdown he scored, he ran over. It, uh, Ekpre Olomo. On this one, he runs through the jam, doesn't worry about the contact, and picks up the first down. That's what you have to do as an elite receiver. You're going to be in contact all game long. You can't let them hold you and frustrate you. First down and goal, the nine-yard line for the Trojans. Tenth play of the drive, the start of the, at the 23. Here's a handoff, Red, straight ahead. And he'll get maybe a yard past the line of scrimmage. You know what this defense reminds me of in a sense, if I'm going to make a pro analogy? Mm -hmm. The Colts defense with Peyton Manning. Built to play with 14-point leads. Put pressure on you, blitz you, show you a lot of different looks. Not sure how they do if you grind it out, if you can have that opportunity. But I don't often have to face that. Always playing with a lead. White Freedy, Bob Sanders back then. Second and goal to seven. Barkley on the play fade, incomplete. Nobody home, that brings up third down and goal at the seven yard line. For Southern California, they're five of six. 
Casey, and this is where the quickness of Nick Aliotti's defense for Oregon comes into play. One of the reasons they're so good in the red zone is that they have the quickness to go. That's Aliotti in the middle with the glasses, reaching for his headset, just sent in his call. Silas Ray, the single setback. Barkley pumping, looking. Barkley in trouble. Barkley. Flag on the play in the corner. Caught. Robert Woods. But hold everything. It's a touchdown. But what's the flag? I think. I think the initial flag is holding against Oregon's defense. I think this touchdown will hold up. Where I saw it come from. Prior to the pass being thrown, holding defense number 27. Penalties declined. Touchdown stands. Because here's where the hold occurs. Take a look at Terrence Mitchell, number 27. That's where the flag came in, holding Nelson Aguilar. But the play was extended for Barkley, and he finds Woods for the touchdown. So in five minutes and 59 seconds remaining in the second quarter, SC down 27-17. Trojans continuing to fight. But the power of logistics to work for you. And by Pizza Hut. Make it great. 27-17. Oregon with the lead. Our aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear. Everything we've learned making tires that go the distance inspires what we roll into yours. Goodyear more driven. Russ Johnson along with Charles Davis in the booth. Julie Alexandria on the sideline. SC cuts it to 10. Adari has done a nice job on touchbacks. This time, DeAnthony Thomas gets one more opportunity. And DeAnthony Thomas taken down after he crosses the 15. Take a look at Matt Barkley and our phantom camera. See his eyes wide open because he knows where he wants to throw the football. But they close because, because he knows the contact is coming from Deion Jordan. He knew where his target was, let it go. Then his eyes closed as he absorbed the contact. Well worth it. Touchdown USC. But Matt Barkley saw it clearly before the hit. But for Oregon, four possessions, four touchdowns. Kenyon Barner putting up huge numbers. They get it to the Anthony Thomas. Thomas running straight ahead as he submarines down in front of Deion Bailey close to the first down. I think about this Oregon offense. I think about something Monty Kiffin said to us early in the year, Gus. When you have to read your keys against teams that move this fast, he told us, see a little, see a lot. If you see a lot, you see nothing, meaning you've got to down focus, read your keys, get clean on what you're seeing, not see the whole big picture, and let all the intricacies affect your play. Mariota running. Mariota with a first down. Watch out. He's got blazing speed. Mariota all the way down inside the SC 15. Nikel Roby tracked him down after a 57-yard gain. Now let's see if they see a little or see a lot. See the fake there? They saw too much. All these guys were looking here. Instead, Mariota sees the gap, and he's gone. Now he throws it. Mariota, touchdown. Oregon, Daryl Hawkins. When Darren Thomas elected to enter the NFL draft, collectively the nation scratched our, we scratched our heads. And we said, well, who's Chip Kelly gonna replace him with? You know, there's a school of thought in Eugene that Darren Thomas saw this young man in his rear view, which helped him make his decision. Because he saw him all of last year. And Brian Bennett, who played for Darren Thomas last year, is a quality quarterback too. Marcus Mariota is without a doubt the real deal.
for 17, Oregon. Three plays, 81 yards. They scored in 50 seconds. And let's answer our Aflac trivia question. Who are the only two coaches in Pac-12 history to win the conference title in their first season? One of them's here tonight, isn't it? That's right. Got to be Chip Kelly's one. And did you say one coach at USC? Well, we'll tell you right after the game. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm mulling it over about which coach at USC did that. Lee from the four. And Marquise Lee will get to the 20. Now we'll answer for you. Who are the only two coaches in Pac-12 history to win the conference title in their first season? Answer, Chip Kelly in 09 and John Robinson back in 1976. The first of his two stints as the head coach at USC. A very successful tenure. And you know John Robinson was a assistant was an assistant at Oregon Just prior to becoming the head coach at USC yeah he, he's got he, he's got his name signed to some of those titles up there doesn't he yes he does first down and 10 at 20 454 to go in the first half Barkley fires picked off intercepted and out of bounds Kiko Alonzo the second time Matt Barkley has been intercepted in the first half. And Kiko Alonso is known as a downhill thumper, but he was the Rose Bowl MVP and had an interception in that game. Watch Alonso here and watch his movements as he retreats into the secondary, reading the bootleg, and watch him turn and go, sees Lee on the crosser, and comes underneath for the interception. Excellent movement skills by the middle linebacker of Oregon. First down and 10 at the USC 28. Oregon with 407 yards in total offense. Five touchdowns in 25 minutes. Mariota breaks a tackle and finally goes down. Breslin, third sack of the day for Southern California. This defense for USC is battling and scrambling and doing all they can, and we see an occasional flash of a big play from them. The question they have to answer, can they put together multiple big plays? We've seen a big play, Oregon shakes it off, they turn around and hit them back with a big play. Second down at 17 after the seven yard loss. Carter and Deion Bailey grabs his ankles. Oregon is a team that knows how to score off turnovers. 129 points, third best in the, co in the college ranks. They've only attempted seven field goals this year with Rob Beard. Third down and 14. Oregon needs to go to the 18-yard line for first down. They hand it off Barner. And he will not get the first down as Lamar Dawson, the middle linebacker, backtracks and makes the tackle after nine-yard gain. They don't necessarily mean they're going to run the field goal kicker out there. Chip Kelly's deciding what he wants to do. Now he's going to send him in. But there's always that moment of indecision for a defense because of their propensity for going for it on fourth down, and then you have to play them for fakes. Rob Beard comes in, 4-7 on the season, 41 long, yard long. This from 41 yards away. And he pulled it. So USC finally a win on defense. That's what you call sudden change and winning. USC's defense after the interception held them. So now the last two kicks for Oregon. Blocked extra point, and now a missed field goal by Beard. USC's defense stands up and fights and bails out their offense. So with 2.49 remaining, the Trojans would love to go into the locker room down by only 10. Play fake. Barkley throws a home run again. Aguilar! 
goodness, the freshman, Nelson Aguilar, touchdown Trojans. What a catch. 76 yards. Woo! We saw the eyes of Matt Barkley on the phantom cam. How about there? A clean pocket, perfect sight lines, and Aguilar knows the hits coming from inside, focuses and puts the ball away, and that's a coming out party for the freshman. They've been looking to develop the third receiver all year long. Nelson Aguilar stepping into the breach this evening. 2.37 to go. Here in the second quarter, we've got a good old fashioned shootout, folks. 34 to 24. Our score. First, Matt Barkley finds Marquise Lee on a 75 yard strike. Now, freshman Nelson Aguilar for 76. And how about the USC defense standing firm and giving them an opportunity? Watch Aguilar in the slot. Deion Jordan rushes. Now he goes. Look at Terrence Mitchell. See him grab him right there? That could have been a flag. He ran through it, played through it, didn't look to the official to try and get help. Focused on the football, ran through the trash, and ends up in the end zone. Matt Barkley has thrown three touchdowns in the first half, two interceptions, 14 of 21, 265 yards passing. I go back to what Lane Kiffin told us in our meeting, and it's something we thought of too, but he was very, how would you say it, definite about this. We don't win this game if our fourth-year quarterback, who's a Heisman Trophy candidate, doesn't play to that level. Matt Barkley's playing to that level here in the first half. He's got the eye of the Tiger right now. Thomas and low back deep. And they'll line drive this one. And it's downed at the 32. And don't forget, folks, coming up at the half is the Pizza Hut halftime show with Aaron and the guys. They'll cover all of today's action. Alabama LSU, big time game in Death Valley. And Oklahoma State is at Kansas State. That game big game in year. Manhattan. Whoa, what, remember that game last year? 50 to 42? They could do that again. And USC's defense cannot afford to relax. Oregon will not just run out the clock. Mariotti dives and picks up a first down. And he's put up some very impressive numbers in the first half. The redshirt freshman, 13 to 15, 181 yards, three touchdowns. He's rushed nine times for 78 yards. You know his most significant number, don't you? Zero turnovers. Mariotti to throw, lofting it up. And a flag on the play. They call it a catch. Keenan Lowe. Look at Lowe looking back. Torn Harris runs right into him. That's what the flag's going to be. And the concentration was still there Pass for the catch. Defense number four. Penalties declined. First down. Look at Keenan Lowe, focus, even though he's being interfered, catches the football, first foot came down, second foot came down, and he takes it all the way to the ground with strong hands for a big completion for Oregon. Barner turns the corner, Breslin chasing it. Barner goes out of bounds at the first down marker. <laughs> all I keep thinking is what an old veteran told me once about an elusive back, like smoke through a keyhole. You cannot grab that guy. See, he made about four moves on the sidelines, and no one ever really got a hand on him. First down at 10 at the 13. Mariotti, and this time he's drilled. Nicely done by Hayes Pollard. Second and 12. Look at our phantom cam, and the impact coming. Pollard lowering the shoulder and driving through the runner and knocking him backwards. Oh, and they fumble it. Loose. SC's got it. First turnover of the day for Oregon. And USC catches a break down by 10 with 1.23 to go. 
And the Trojans have two timeouts. And this was not a, an initial force turnover, I don't believe. This is a turnover just in the mesh point with Mariota. Actually, not even the mesh point. He doesn't grab it on the snap. He never possesses it. And Wes Horton able to get the football. See him looking at try, but he's also looking at his back and the lineman cutting in front. He doesn't follow it all the way through. See, his eyes aren't totally focused on the football. He's thinking about where the handoff's going to be. Doesn't possess it, USC does, and SC with a chance to get more points. There's a buzz in the building now, folks. If SC scores with 1.23 to go, this place is ready to explode. Barkley. Marquis Lee, the intended receiver. Dangerous throw from Matt Barkley. But I think I'm reading what Nick Aliotti wants here with a minute 18 to go. He's not going to sit back and be passive and let Matt Barkley try and pick him apart. He wants to attack. He ran ahead and blitzed with Kiko Alonso coming up the gut and getting in the face of Matt Barkley on that play. Kenyon Barner over to the soul. Marcus Mariotti. We'll take a look at the numbers for Barkley and Red. Second and 10 at the 19. Lee in motion out of the backfield. Barkley. Here's a screen. Red. First down. And more. Silas Red. Over the 35. Brian Jackson, the safety, stops him. Clock stops. On a first down as SC scrambles back to the line of scrimmage. A 19 yard gain. Curtis McNeil in the backfield for Matt Barkley. McNeil running. Curtis McNeil! Out of bounds of the Oregon 40. And what we're seeing now, folks, counterpunch by USC after taking heavy shots early. How about the defense? And you're talking about the counterpunching the defense, shutting down opportunities for Oregon on the last two drives to give their offense a chance to throw the big shots back at Oregon also. A gain of 21, first and 10 at the Oregon 40. McNeil remains in the game. Here's Barkley, finds McNeil. McNeil in space. Curtis McNeil down at the Oregon 15. USC with fight. A gain of 19, a gain of 21, and now a gain of 25. And I like the play call and using the pressure of Oregon against itself. We've seen a couple of screens. Here's Barkley, pumping, and the end zone! Flag on the play! Evo at Crayolamu covering for Oregon. And I think Marquise Lee actually fought through on this play. Two fouls on the play. Holding, offense, number 50. Pass interference, defense, number 14. Penalties offset, replay first down. Look at the end zone. Talk about Marquise Lee having to play through. Hands on you, fight through it. He didn't worry about the call until the end of the play that time. Well done by him, but it was wiped out by the holding call against Abe Markowitz at left guard. First down and 10. At the 15, 26 seconds remaining. Barkley to the sideline and dropped. Marquise Lee took his hand, his eyes off the football. And that brings up second down and long. Robert Woods has the one touchdown catch. Other than that, I think he's been largely quiet in this game. There'd be so much attention on Marquise Lee in this situation. I would think hard about trying to find something for Woods in this spot. Aguilar has been huge as well as he'll line up as a wide receiver at the top of the screen. Woods at the bottom. They find Marquise Lee. And Lee tries to reverse. Dropped it. Oh! Who's got the football? Or 
Morgan. This is how you survive on defense in college football 2012. Don't worry about the score, but how many times can you strip the ball away and knock it free and take it from the other team? That's exactly what Oregon did. I didn't catch the number of the initial player who popped it free, but he created a big play for Oregon's defense that should allow them to get out of the half still up 10. And even if SC could have have at least gotten the three points. They took them out of any points. Marquise Lee trying to make a big play, and the ball was knocked free. I'm told it was Deion Jordan, the All-American defensive end. Here's Barner running. And Barner out of bounds with eight seconds to go. And there is a flag on the far side at the 40-yard line. After the play, personal foul, laid hit out of bounds offense. Number one, 15-yard penalty, still first down. That's Josh Huff, called for the late hit. Wide receivers for Oregon take great pride in their blocking. And Josh Huff was a little overzealous there. But if you're Southern California, down by 10 at the break, after Oregon pretty much was able to do anything they wanted, that's got to be a confidence boost for you. You don't go into the half hanging your head. If I'm Lane Kiffin, I gather my team before I go in and tell them what a great job they've done and let them run up the ramp feeling good about themselves. 34-24, our halftime score. If you've got a drawer full of knives that are about as... This is Kevin Frazier, and welcome back to Fox College Football. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our broadcast. Fox College Football is sponsored by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter. By Allstate, are you in good hands? And by T-Mobile, test drive our nationwide 4G network. 34-24 as the sun sets here in beautiful Southern California. And we are locked and loaded. This game getting better and better by the moment. Deion Jordan on the sideline. Their ace pass rusher. Second down and goal at the eight. Barkley throws in the break. Let's go downstairs to Julie Alexander. Guys, Deion Jordan on the sidelines here for Oregon, re-injuring his right shoulder on that last series. Had his head in his hands, a lot of show of emotion. Obviously very upset. Trainers are working on him. His loss could be crucial. Last year, Julie, he was hurt in the first quarter against, against USC. They didn't have his pass rush for the entire game. That was significant for them. And with the way USC is moving the ball again tonight, they need that good pass rusher off the edge. They had hoped to win some matchups with him against the freshman Max Turk, number 75 for USC, or Kevin Graff, the right tackle. Now they don't have him in the lineup. And this is Randall Telfer. Sophomore tight end. He and Xavier Grimble pretty much are alternating starters. It's Telfer gets up, walks off on his own. Good sign. He'd had an ankle injury, missed a couple of games back for this one. They tried to sneak him out to the sideline on the last play out of a tight formation. Looked like heavy run. Play action, tried to get him out there and get the ball to him. Looks like he's ready to go back in. Much more of what you call an inline tight end. Guy on the line of scrimmage, good blocker, can catch the ball. But Xavier Grimble is your move guy. Go up and down the line of scrimmage, run into the seams, catch the football. Now SC will come back onto the field. Facing a big third down and goal at the eight. Matt Barkley has been wonderful. And they've needed him on third down. See, and those are the kind of numbers 
that people look at when you ask how a quarterback responds to pressure. How do you do in big game performances? You see six of six on third down, the money down, that's what you like. Watch 86. He's lethal this close to the end zone. Xavier Grimble. Barkley looks the other side. Broken up and a flag. Marquise Lee, the intended receiver. Evil Ekwe Olamu may have grabbed him from behind. And Olamu thought that he got away with this when he thought it was good coverage. But the problem is, as a corner, you can't let a receiver inside on a slant route on the goal line. Pass interference, defense, number two, automatic first down. Take a look, all the way at the top. See right there, once Lee beat him to the inside, he had to reach out and grab him to try and slow his momentum. It wasn't number two, it was number 14, Ifo Ekpre Olomu, and Lee beat him across his face and forced the penalty. First down and goal at the two. The Anuku, Silas Red, Silas Red! We got a ball game, folks, in L.A. 9.59 to go. SC with a chance to cut it to three. This is college football on Fox. Extra point good. And this has been as close as it's been since the first minute of the game. The eyes of Silas Red as he hits Painter. We've got a three-point ball game. And with 9.59 to go in the third, we've got a three-point ball game. The momentum on the side of the Trojans. Oregon now has to start putting points on the board. Before, it was a little bit easier. Adari kicks this one deep into the end zone, and Oregon will start from the 25. This week, the Fox College football social poll on Facebook asked fans which undefeated team will be the next to lose. 46% of you saying Kansas State. They're up two touchdowns at home against Oklahoma State. To cast your vote, log on to Facebook.com backslash Fox Sports. Well, the 18% who had Notre Dame came very close to being correct today. Pittsburgh took them to the limit. Fighting average ended up prevailing. Marcus Mariota, the redshirt freshman, begins at his own 25. Hands it off, Kenyon Barner. And Kenyon Barner popping it through over the 40, a gain of 16. Barner on his way to 200 yards rushing. He's got 185. This crowd wants to fully get with USC right now. Their defense has to give them a reason to go ahead and go all out. They can't let it be that easy on a first down run. Now Mariota. And he'll get to midfield. Ace Ballard stops him. Back-to-back -back significant runs when this crowd was just saying, to the USC defense, give me a reason. We're there. We're right on the verge. And Oregon is diffusing them with these runs. Sellout crowd, over 93,000 in attendance. At the legendary LA Coliseum. Mariota again. Mariota bottled up this time and goes down. A one yard game. SC swarming. Leonard Williams, Deion Bailey. They Makes it third down at two. And here comes the crowd. Oregon four and five on third down conversion. Garner, bottom up, Garner. Oh, he breaks a tackle. Does he get there is a question. 
Deion Bailey finally, but SC had all kinds of opportunities. And he did not pick up the first down they're going for. Fourth down and one. They swing it out. And this is caught by Hawkins for first down. So Chip Kelly, there was no decision. Now watch Josh Huff, number one, blocking Nikel Roby to give the opportunity to number 16, Daryl Hawkins. And that was fourth and short. They just throw the ball out there and let their wide receivers pick it up. On first down, here's Huff. Makes a first man miss. Huff. Finally tracked down inside the 30 by Hayes Pollard. And we talked to Lane Kiffin about his team being able to tackle in space. He said it's the most important aspect of this game for his defense. And how many times have we seen missed tackles in space? There was Leonard Williams, and it's really unfair. You're talking about defensive tackle on his feet in space, trying to take out a scat back wide receiver, and he was unsuccessful. First down, Barner. And Barner tripped up by Hayes Pollard. Gain six on the play. The question coming into the game was, how would Oregon react if pressed in the second half? So far, we're seeing an answer, only up three. Carter again, this time, will be dropped for a loss. George Uka. Third down and three. Both teams were very successful in the first half on third down. Six of seven, four of five, not the norm for either. The Anthony Thomas in the backfield now. They pitch it to him. And a false start called against the Ducks. False start, offense, number 15. Five yard penalty, still third down. Colt Lyerla. So instead of third and three, third down and eight. At the 26 for young Marcus Mariota. The Anthony Thomas right next to him. Mariota to throw. Steps up in the pocket and runs it. Looking for the first down. He gets down and it's close. In front of Nikel Roby. Inches short of the first down, fourth down, and inches. Ariota has rushed for 88 yards. Chip Kelly going for it. Barner. And he picks it up the hard way. A hard yard for Kenyon Barner. <laughs> USC's defense celebrating a nice hit, but that was an easy first down. They were a couple yards downfield, weren't they? First down, Mario to pump it. Looking, throws. And it was this one out of the end zone. Very good decision by the freshman. Very intelligent play in the pocket, realizing that play was over. He was out of time. Throws it out of the back of the end zone. Live to fight another down without giving up the sack yardage. Mariotta, a four-star recruit, rated the number 12 overall quarterback in the nation while at St. Louis High School in Honolulu. 12th play of the drive. It started at the 25. They'll pitch it out. Barner turns it up. And Kenyon Barner goes down at the 10. And I've seen USC on this drive trying to get substitutes in and out of the game now, trying to combat the tempo that Oregon brings to them. Remember, they gave up 94 plays on defense against Arizona. Barner again, breaks it. Barner, end zone, touchdown. Oregon responds. SC unable to get lined up. This is how they out-tempo you. Watch USC's defense. Oregon's getting set, ready to go. Where's USC? Are we lined up? Do we go there? Where do we go? 
And then another missed tackle in the backfield by Lamar Dawson, and Barner goes into the end zone. When you say Heisman Trophy discussion, you better put Kenyon Barner into your discussion group. Rob Beard. Extra point, good. And the Ducks back up by 10. 5-14 to play, third quarter, 41-31. Welcome back, 5-14 to go in the third quarter, 10-point ball game. Over 1,000 yards of total offense between these two teams. Marquise Lee, Nelson Aguilar back deep. Here's Lee from the two. Lee with the lane. Marquise Lee, down the sideline. Marquise Lee, sprinting out of bounds, inside the 20. This is blocked well by USC special teams, but you tend to block better when you know you have a game breaker. Look at that, Aguilar, Mary's up right there on the block. Look at the block here, block here. Now you're giving a guy with incredible gifts an opportunity, and what does he do? Makes two Oregon Ducks miss before finally getting corralled deep downfield by number 13, Troy Hill. An 82-yard return for Marquise Lee. First down at the Oregon 16 for the Trojans. The handoff to Silas Red. And Red dives forward. Picks up three. Marquise Lee taking a breather. And for Oregon's defense, they almost have to treat this like a sudden change. Almost treat it like a turnover. It was such a big momentum play on the kickoff return. They have to go out on the field like they have to shut something down because of where the ball started, right in the red zone. The Anuku in that tailback with Jaleel Pinner, the upback. Robert Woods in motion. The Anuku trying to pound it, and Oregon all over the play. Great pressure by the Oregon defense, and that'll bring up a third down and eight. And for both defenses and for Oregon's offensive line, it's almost like a hockey game. You're rotating people in and out. It's like a shift. Everybody over the board, you rotate in, substitute people in because of the pace of this game. Trying to get some rest and some fresh legs and fresh bodies on the field for each and every snap. They're shifting on the fly. Third down and eight. Lee back in the game. Marquise Lee, first down, SC. As he hops down inside the five, Terrence Mitchell with the tackle. But on third and eight, Trojans get 12. And now it's first down and goal near the two-yard line. In the first half, they used Marquise Lee out of the backfield to hide him. Now they use him in motion. How does Marquise Lee get off the line of scrimmage and have no white shirts near him? That makes zero sense, doesn't it? As a defensive coordinator, He's one of the guys you star, circle, and put a spotlight on in your game plan. Big game for Lee. First down and goal. They spot it at the three-yard line. This time it's McNeil. And Curtis McNeil may have gotten a half yard on the play. Nico Alonzo in the middle. USC is going to go real heavy here in the offensive line. They just brought Andre Walker, a former starter and left tackle, into the game as an extra offensive lineman blocker. Sometimes you show heavy, and USC likes to bootleg and throw play action. Second down and goal to pitch. Silas Red, smack and he's in. What a game. 2.32 to go, third quarter, 41-37. First one to 60 wins. <laughs> you 
that might be conservative at the rate we're going. But the extra offensive lineman helped provide the avenue to the end zone for Silas Red. Extra point, good. Silas Red scoring from the three yard line, but this play was set up by the special one, Marquise Lee. And Silas Red paid it off. by Goodyear, everything we've learned making tires that go the distance inspires what we roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. By that touchdown play, Lane Kiffin, a little imagination, took his left tackle and flipped him to the right side, put him in a slot position, almost like a receiver, and brought in another tackle to play the backside. Adari, this is DeAnthony Thomas, will bring it out of the end zone. And Thomas... Trying to get started, and out of bounds, a 27-yard return. Introducing the UPS Team Performance Index, a new statistical measure that looks at the efficiency of a team's offense, defense, special teams, and miscues to define their competitive advantage. Check out the UPS Team Performance Index throughout the season for a look at the logistics behind a winning team. How about the top three teams started the night in the top four slots in the country, and then Boise State, has an opportunity to still go to a BCS ball, as does Florida State. From the 26, here's the toss. Barner gets down the sideline, nice stiff arm. And he'll gain close to 10 yards on the play. Jawanza Starling finally getting to him. But you got to compliment this Oregon offensive line. They made some changes up front for this game. They end up getting an injury. Mana Gregg, who had started the last two games, couldn't play tonight. So they moved Ryan Clinton from left guard to right guard and put Kyle Long to start the game at left guard, normally a tackle. Kyle Long, the son of our colleague at Fox, Howie Long, who's in attendance. We saw him at the hotel today. He looked calm. Poor dad. For a dad. As you know, he's been through it before. He's got his son Chris, who's a Pro Bowl defensive end for the St. Louis Rams. Got there he is. Got Howie Jr., who's a terrific lacrosse player at Virginia. Second and four, Barner again. First down and more. Barner out of bounds. He couldn't stay in. Anthony Sorrow nudged him, but it's a gain of 21. And the athletic offensive line of Oregon keeps providing answers when USC presses them. They keep finding creases and holes and open up avenues for running backs to sprint through. Byron Marshall comes in for Barner in the backfield. Play fake. Mariota up the seam. Touchdown, Josh Huff. His second of the day, 36 yards. And that ball could not have been thrown any better than the redshirt freshman from Hawaii just did. Take a look. Because now you've got a slot with a linebacker, Deion Bailey. And he's looking into the backfield and doesn't really run. I'm not sure if he thinks Jawanza Starling is supposed to take him, but he doesn't really run with the receiver. Extra point, good. 119 to play in the third. This kid, Marcus Mariota, has been perfect. Josh Huff with the score in front of a frustrated Matt Barkley. this commercial break. Here's a handoff, Barter, outside. Touchdown, Oregon. His fourth touchdown of the game. And you just wonder, CD, with all the talent that USC has on defense, 
These players that you see on this SC team will be playing, many of them, in the NFL. But you just wonder, against Oregon, why are they struggling so mightily? And they actually look like they're 100% lost out there. I think they get overwhelmed by tempo, as Oregon does to many teams. With the pace that they play. Offside, number 21, unabated across the line of scrimmage. Penalties decline. Trial beat again from the 30-yard line. You know, the pace they play, the quickness in which they snap the football, hard to mentally process, know where you're supposed to go. They don't get lined up. And after a while, that's discouraging. Extra point is good. 54-38. Take that 55-38 now with the extra point. Oregon leading. Five thirty-eight, Oregon leading with 9.15 to play in the fourth. Our aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear. Everything we've learned making tires that go the distance inspires what we roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. USC, their defense over the last two weeks, given up over 1,300 yards, 714 this evening, 588 last week at Arizona. Marquise Lee. Inside his own five. And Lee trying to break another one. And he'll get out of bounds at the 45. A 43-yard return. Now it's time to check out the Nissan Heisman watch. And Colin Klein from Kansas State may be the front runner. Has his cats up at the half against Oklahoma State. Manti Teo and his Notre Dame team survived Pittsburgh. How about Kenyon Barner? Finally getting a chance to play almost a full game. And look at the numbers he's putting up tonight. Matt Barkley battling hard. Has played very well overall this evening. And there are a bunch of guys not on that list we should be talking about. Marquise Lee from USC should be a guy on this list. First down to Tim for Barkley at the 47. And Marquise Lee. Miscommunication on the route. You've had to chase all night on offense. You almost have to be perfect in what you do. USC putting together the drives to start this half, start the third quarter, second half, and oh, finally, Oregon gets a stop on the last possession, and their offense turns it into points, which puts even more pressure on the USC offense at this point of the game. Second and 10. Barkley over the middle, Aguilar. And Nelson Aguilar, who's had a very big game this evening for SC, gains eight yards. Three catches, 116 yards for Aguilar, including a 76-yard touchdown. Third down and two at the 45. Silas Red on third and two will not get it. Got to go for it here, though. This is not a time there for, for them to punt it. They've got to go for it with this field position. And that run on that third and two hasn't normally been a rundown for USC tonight. Third and two, third and three. It's usually been a play action, bootleg type pass. Fourth down and two for Matt Barkley and the Trojans. Barkley to throw it. Marquise Lee and a first down for SC. And that's a well-run route because he knew what the first down marker was and made sure he ran to that spot so he didn't cut it short and get tackled just short of the, short of the sticks. Good intelligence on the route, on the quick speed out for him, getting to the sideline, and Barkley delivered. So a first down at the Oregon 42 for the Trojans. 
the Anuku. Curtis McNeil in the backfield. Here's McNeil. And this time he jumped. Nicely done. Wade Keely Keepy with the tackle. Here's Aaron Andrews with an update. Guys, just to update you on Alabama LSU. More scoring from AJ McCarron here. He runs in a nine yard touchdown. Alabama leads 14 to 3. This game just underway here in the second half, guys. Thanks, EA. And AJ McCarron as a quarterback is attracting a lot of attention around the country and at the next level with his play this year. Put him on a Heisman watch, too. Hasn't thrown an interception all year. Barkley standing strong in the pocket, and it's picked off. Dargan, third interception of the night by Matt Barkley, a flag on the play. Eric Dargan. And the flag came from the secondary, which, if you're an Oregon fan, might make you a little bit nervous. Pass interference. Defense, number 21. Automatic first down. Avery Patterson. So let's take a look because normally he plays in the, he plays deep. This is him short. Watch him against Woods in the middle. He knocks him down on the play. But I'm not sure why that's pass interference. Because the ball's not in the air when he makes the play on Robert Woods. He can chuck him. All right, chuck him. He can knock him to the ground on that play. That part's fine. I'm not sure that's a legitimate call because that ball's not in the air. Chip Kelly doesn't understand it either, and he's got a point. USC catches a break. First down and 10 at the 40. Barkley pumping, delivers. Lead the intended receiver. That one thrown high. See the strain on the face of Terrence Mitchell, wanting the inter wanting the interception, and also it's been a long night for the Oregon secondary too, dealing with the All-American receivers that USC throws at them on every snap. Second and ten. Barkley. Dumps it off McNeil. He's got a room. McNeil stumbling forward and finally dropped at the 25 after a first down. A 15 yard pickup. Goal of screen passes is to use your aggression against you. Oregon brought some pressure, dumped it short inside, and McNeil gets upfield. Now Barkley to Aguilar. He turns it up. Nelson Aguilar with a stiff arm and finally. Tripped up by Eric Dargan, but he'll gain 18. Seeing a freshman really grow up in front of our eyes tonight, aren't we, partner? Huge game for Nelson Aguilar. Four catches, 135 yards, and a touchdown. Lee, at the top of your screen, Woods in the slot. Looking for Woods, and Woods incomplete. He got dropped in a flag. Avery Patterson may get flagged for taunting. It's either that or he's going to say he hit a defenseless receiver after the ball was gone. Personal foul. Illegal helmet contact on the defense, number 21. At the distance to the goal, first down. They're always going to err on the side of caution. Let's see the play. Ball's gone. There's the hit. Yes. Oh. Helmet ends up in the face mask of Robert Woods. Watch at the end of the play. Ball hits. See the hit right there? Helmet comes underneath and hits the face mask of Woods. They're told to call that every time. Barkley rolling out of the pocket. Throws and touchdown. Randall Telford. USC refusing to go away. 527 to play in the fourth. 55 to 44. And how often in college football, or football in general, 
You say we scored 45 points and lost. This game has just changed. Remember West Virginia Baylor this year, 70 to 63, and Baylor lost. Members of the Bears defense stop by to talk about what makes them the best defense in the NFL. It's all on the Fox NFL Sunday pregame show tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, only on Fox. And the guy to the right's got to go to work tomorrow. How yes, so? and the guy on the left is one of those guys that's tasked with trying to stop RG3. Chris Long, the Pro Bowl defensive end for the Rams, who had a monster year for them last season and is really playing at a Pro Bowl level again. SC showing onside kick. Can they get it? No. USC got the perfect bounce, but couldn't recover the football. By the kicking team because the ball was out of bounds. Therefore, the ball is over his first down and 10. Look at Roby. Boy, now Lane Kiffin used a challenge earlier that was unsuccessful. Remember that. He challenged a play that was unsuccessful on the challenge. He would love for the booth to look at that again. And, and they will. Getting it. Running on the previous play, that possession was not gained by the kicking team until the ball was out of bounds. The play's under further review. Take a look. Mikel Roby will be the closest to it. Number 21 will come into the frame now. Catches the ball, sliding over the sideline. Mike, your thoughts on this play? To maintain control. You know, here's the thing now. You're talking about recovery of a loose ball. So you're going to the ground. It is the process. So you're going to have to establish, A, did he have control? with the knee down and then did he maintain control when he hit the ball out of bat when he hit the ground out of bounds so that's the aspect that the uh, replay official is going to be looking at so does he have the knee down with control which I think he does and then does he maintain possession when he hits the ground out of bounds which I think he does also so if I'm looking at this I actually give the ball to SC with the recovery of the onside kick Mike I concur because that's what he did. He caught it inbound, slid across, and as you talk about the process, maintaining control, I believe he did that. I think USC will have the football. I think the only thing they could look at is that one shot from inside when the ball seemed to have hit the ground a little bit, if it moved. And, you know, move to me is not losing possession. So you have to lose control of the ball. Now, remember, they ruled that it wasn't recovered at the sideline, so they have to be absolutely, con I mean, have indisputable video evidence here that they can reverse this call in the field. And I think when you look at all those shots that we provided, I think you do have. I agree with Mike that, that they, they got possession, and I think there's enough here to overturn the call on the field. I think he established control, maintained it, and I know exactly what Mike's saying right here at the end. See how the ball goes to the ground with him, but he still has control of the football. It never comes out of his arm. He's got it cradled there. It may hit the ground, but he's got it cradled in his arm. To me, that should be possession for USC. Big play right here. Big decision. Well, you just feel how critical this call is, can't you? Oh, my goodness. If USC gets the ball, you talk about new life. Here we go. After further review, the player did not maintain possession of the ball throughout the play. Therefore, the ball goes to Oregon. First down and 10. Rolling on the field, it's confirmed. 
Well, you heard Mike Pereira say the one thing that could be was, did he maintain it all the way through? He and I thought that he did, because the ball can move if you still have possession of it. But their determination was that it moved enough that it wasn't possession. Oregon benefits from the replay. So the Ducks take over close to midfield. They'll hand it off to Barner. And Barner goes down inbound. And this is Lane Kiffin's reaction to the call. You can tell he you tell he came up with a real thought and composed himself as a head coach. And now Oregon, look at the play clock, 17, 16. Now they're going to start to milk it a little bit and run their offense. Barner. No gain on the play, makes it third down and three. See him with a 10 point lead, expect Oregon to milk the clock and think about four downs here. Not even worry about punting the ball away. Think about possession being the key to, key to winning a game for them. Third and three at the 44. Keep an eye on the play clock. Shouldn't snap it anywhere in front of three seconds. And Oregon Time calls timeout. Oregon, timeout number two. 30 seconds timeout. One timeout remaining for the Ducks. And that brings us to a look at this evening's Reese's Perfect Play. How about these perfect plays? It was supposed to be one, but when it's Kenyon Barner in the night that he's had, there's no such thing as one perfect play. There is a series of perfect plays. You don't get just one Reese's Cup. You get two in a package. Kenyon Barner, multiple perfect plays this evening. Close to 300 yards rushing, a school record for Kenyon Barner. Four touchdowns as well. And Michael James here to see it. Saying, won't you leave me just a little something as a legacy <laughs> back there? 33 at the 44. They pitch it to Barner. He juggled it, and he won't pick up the first down. See, now after the loss, you think about punting it away if you're Chip Kelly. If it was fourth and real short, I think he'd try and go for it. But the bobble on the start to throw up the timing of the play. And look at the swarm by USC. Dawson there first. TJ McDonald, Leonard Williams, Hayes Pilar. So Oregon will punt for the first time tonight. Remember they had a they had a point after touchdown blocked. You've got to protect in this situation if you're Oregon. It's, you, want to, you, you would expect USC to try and go after the block here. Robert Woods back deep. Jackson Rice at the 38. And out of bounds. They spot the football at the 15-yard line. Don't forget, coming up after the game, stay tuned for the AT&T Fox College Saturday postgame show. They'll cover all of today's action, including the big clash between Alabama and LSU in Death Valley. Oklahoma State at K-State. A thriller in South Bend. That, that thriller in South Bend was a little more thrilling than anyone in Notre Dame's camp wanted to have and I would say expected to have first down and 10 of the 15 335 remaining in the fourth for Matt Barkley do or die time for the Trojans Barkley 
scrambling. Throws across his body incomplete. Pocket breaking down. Marquise Lee, the intended receiver. True freshman DeForest Buckner, number 44. Get off the line of scrimmage. Excellent pass rush. Push the pocket back into the face of Barkley. Help force the incompletion. First down, they just rush four and drop seven with a 10 point lead. No, the automatic thing is you got a senior quarterback. How does that happen? Without knowing exactly what point in the time clock he had the play call in, I can't go and just say simply that's on him. You got to know how much time he had in order to initiate that play process. That's a mistake USC could ill afford to have. Second down at 15. Barkley short drop underneath Robert Woods dives forward gets to the 20. Nico Alonzo stops him. 400 yard day for Matt Barkley fourth time in his career. Third and five. Down by 10. Barkley to the sideline. Drops it. First mistake of the game for this young man. He had the first down as well. So that brings up fourth down and five. He picked a heck of a time to, to show that he was a freshman because we hadn't seen it all game long, had we? Not at all. USC has to go for it. Time not on their side. Marquise Lee in the backfield. Barkley, a punt lead. And USC turns it over on down. And Nick Aliotti, the D coordinator, said, forget playing coverage. Watch the pressure, right? Watch everybody coming to him. And now what? They covered everyone else. And even the nose tackle, Taylor Hart, dropped into zone coverage. And I think that fooled him a little bit. Normally he would rush. He dropped and took away the middle zone. Alonso, a really nice job shadowing Woods. Look at the coverage there. Aguilar can't get open. Well done by the Oregon defense. Oregon now at the SC 20 yard line. Barnum. And the Ducks will not be in a hurry. Lamar Dawson with the tackle. So let's take a look at. The road ahead the teams chasing the BCS title game. Well, if you're Alabama, if you handle LSU, and last report we got, they were up 14 to 3. We'll Texas A&M's next for them. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Oregon messing up our broadcast. <laughs> Get to the line of scrimmage so quickly. <laughs> and you know something, Chip, if Chip Kelly knew that had happened, he would love it, wouldn't he? Yes, he would. Faster, faster. First down, touchdown. His fifth of the day, but a flag on the play. Coming back, be a hold against Oregon, the referee. Holding. Offense, number 85, 10-yard penalty, still second down. That's Pharaoh Brown. But look, Texas A&M for Alabama will not be easy, folks. Did you see Johnny Football, Johnny Manziel, their quarterback? They're playing better and better. At TCU, at Baylor, Texas for Kansas State. Notre Dame, we thought they'd have some walkovers. Those teams will rise up and fight. BC and Wake Forest before they finish here at USC. And Oregon next week at Cal, who lost a tough one uh, Friday night against Washington. Then a huge one with Stanford. And of course, the Civil War at Oregon State. A very tough schedule for Oregon down the stretch. Millard with the tackle. 
huge day for Kenyon Barner. Prior to that run, 37 carries, 295 yards. Four touchdowns. Chip Kelly and this Oregon team, he is now rushed for 300 yards. Officially 38 carries, 300 yards, averaging eight yards per carry. Breaking the Michael James record, most rushing yards in a game at the University of Oregon. You don't want to see him take a loss here for the record's purpose, right? <laughs> Drop down below 300. You hand it to him, he won't take a loss at all. Kenyon Barner, again, that's number five. Kenyon Barner with 322 yards rushing. Five touchdowns. They wear you down physically, but they also wear you down mentally because they keep you thinking at an extremely fast rate all game long. And after a while, it's hard for those synapses to keep coming together and figuring out what to do. And he waltzes into the end zone. Great kickout block on that touchdown run by Kyle Long. And I'm sure that's going to make one man in particular in the building very happy. Talk about Steve Greatwood, the offensive line coach. <laughs> Watch Kyle Long. Seventy four was at the top of your screen. So Veronis Grassu, 55 also with a nice block, but they always talk about big runs, Gus. The first seven yards belong to the offensive line and the running back. Anything beyond that, you credit the guys out wide, wide receiver slot guys to escort you that much farther down the field. I think everyone on Oregon did a nice job getting the blocks. Kenyon Barter, record setting day. Pac-12 record is 357 yards. Ruben Mays with 357. Washington State versus Oregon in 84. I remember that year well. We played against Ruben Mays. My Tennessee team played against Ruben Mays and that Washington State team. Mark Griffin was quarterbacking. They came to Knoxville and we outlasted them that night. So SC will get the ball at the 35, the minute and 52 to go. Down 62 to 45. <laughs> Matt Barkley, 29 of 48, 412 yards passing, four touchdowns, two interceptions. Barkley complete to Marquise Lee as Kiko Alonzo slings him to the turf. Barkley tipped and caught Aguilar. And they give him the catch at the 36. Seen some good concentration tonight. There's the tip. And how about Aguilar? Seeing it and carrying it to catching it for a first down. A 21 yard game. And a timeout called by the Ducks. Oregon, timeout number three, 30 second timeout. So, where do the Trojans go from here?
is the big question as you take a look at their upcoming schedule. In a sense, they cede control of the Pac-12 South with this loss, but they can wrench it back by winning against Arizona State and then at UCLA. I think UCLA, if they win tonight, goes into the driver's seat. They're playing Arizona this evening. But UC Arizona, excuse me, UC USC, UCLA head-to-head -head could end up deciding this thing, which would almost be, what is that, a back to the future? Remember the good old days when we'd always turn on that game that decided the Pac-8 title? That's right. Before Pac-10? That could very well be the case again this year, depending on how things play out. But it's not over for USC. And if that happens, conceivably, they could get a rematch with the same Oregon team. As we take a look at the Pac-12 South standings. See, if USC takes the loss and goes to 6-3 and three and UCLA finds a way to win tonight against Arizona and goes to 7-2, and two, they take control. But remember, head-to-head -head your first tiebreaker. So if USC can win out and beat UCLA head-to-head -head down the stretch, if UCLA is still that team, they still have title hopes on the USC campus. Still got Arizona State to play also. So first down for the Trojans at the Oregon 37. Barkley in trouble and Matt Barkley going down. Taylor Hart getting into the backfield, and that is a sack for Hart. I mean, that way you talk about a jailbreak to the quarterback. Taylor Hart was there almost about the time Barkley got the ball. He tried to unload and get rid of it, but Jay Strickert's called him in the grass and down before he unloaded the pass. First sack of the night for Oregon. Aguilar. Juking. Can't get out of bounds. Gaining in this one. Oregon got off to the big start, up 21 to 3. USC rallied. Eventually cut this game to a three-point football game in the second half. But the big story. The Trojans just with no answers for Chip Kelly and the Oregon offense. Kenyon Barner, 300 yards rushing. And their young quarterback in Eugene is a cool customer. I think what USC was counting on, can we put the pressure on them? And could the young quarterback handle it? Well, remember, as you noted, it was 34-31, third quarter. And Oregon kept answering on offense. And that was led by the quarterback, Mariota. And then finally, the defense got a couple of stops, which helped extend the lead to where we are now. Fourth down and three, and this ball is caught by Robert Woods. Woods running, hurtling. Woods trying to get to the end zone and out of bounds at about the two. Robert Woods with a 28-yard gain, five seconds to go. And I like the fact that the home crowd recognize the effort despite the fact that it's not going to change the final result. That Robert Woods continued to fight and scratch and claw to try and make this thing to change even though he knows the final score will not be reflective of it. First down and goal. Five seconds to go. In the end zone. Marquise Lee with the touchdown. With the second remaining. Sixty-two, fifty-one. Mark Lee throwing his fifth touchdown pass. 483 yards passing on 35 of 54. Two interceptions. Do you see that look on Chip Kelly's face? He's going to enjoy the win. 
but he's got plenty to work with on his team. That's what you kind of want as a head coach. Win the game, but still plenty to say to your team. 1,361 yards of total offense by these two teams. 16 touchdowns. Two-point conversion. Marquise Lee, the intended receiver, incomplete. Olamu there defensively. Uh, while we wait for the final kickoff, let's take a, take a look at the BCS top 10. You see Alabama leading 14 to 10 at LSU. Kansas State up by 18 against Oklahoma State at home. Notre Dame. Start your hearts again, Irish fans. You got away today. Oregon winning big now. And then you see Georgia. I thought they might get tested today by Ole Miss coming off an emotional game against Florida. They handled that. Florida, an ugly game against Missouri, but they won. A couple of teams idle there in South Carolina and Florida State and Louisville. You know, they gave up the opening kickoff touchdown to Temple. Temple ran it back, 7-zip. And Charlie Strong's team, led by quarterback Teddy Bridgewater, blasted Temple in the end result, 45-17. Now, that's a good story for you, folks. Louisville and Charlie Strong still undefeated, leading the Big East. So with one tick remaining in this game, Andre Hadari will send it away. And Hadari sends it into the end zone for a touchback. You know, that's a classy move right there. You know why? The onside kick is one of the more physically punishing plays in football. And the result's not going to change even if you get it because the clock's going to run out. And I think for Lane Kiffin to recognize that, not put any players in a punishing spot again, I got to tip my cap to him for that one. I think it's a class move to keep the kids from having another hit, another contact. A disappointing evening for USC. Still a lot of football to play. As Oregon takes the knee, Chip Kelly now 3-1 against SC. His team remains undefeated, 9-0. 6-0 in the conference. As Oregon wins it 62 to 51 on the road. Sixty-two fifty-one, the final. Now let's go to Studio A, where Aaron Andrews is standing by to lead the post-game report.